What a bowling! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Yeah! Burnley won it at the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. And he got on the outside, comes inside, comes on the shot, oh what a goal, Manuel Benson once more, that is top class. Burnley have done it, fantastic, Flores deserve the championship title, they've been the best side throughout the campaign, Burnley have won the second tier, what a fantastic achievement, the players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everybody and welcome along to the latest episode of the Turf Cast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Remond, ahead of this weekend's trip to that there, London, when we take on Brentford at the G Tech Community Stadium. Looking forward to this one, I've got tickets. Thank you to the people that sorted me out because as I put on Twitter, I did sleep on tickets, I'm not organised enough. We've started selling them far too early now for me. When I decided, yeah, I'll go to that match, they're already sold out, uh, which can be a bit of a pain. So thank you to the people that came forward and let me buy their tickets off them, I really do appreciate it. But of course, it's been a couple of weeks since we had a game in the Premier League. The weather has turned in the last couple of weeks. It's got a little bit cold. Hopefully Burnley can turn their fortunes around in the Premier League as well and start actually picking up some points. But as you can see, I am joined by Dave and he's from the Be Sotted podcast. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, um, I've enjoyed the last couple of weeks without without a game. The the Man United match, the last the last ones, I'm still traumatised from the last few minutes of that. So uh, it's taken me a fortnight to get over it. To be to be honest. Yeah, it sounds like you feel like Burnley fans as well. I, I, when when I remember last time we went down, I know we we're just talking of, of, uh, about it a little bit off camera, but last time we were in the Premier League, obviously we got relegated, and I actually enjoyed uh, the international breaks at that moment because of what you just said. Like it's it can become a bit of a chore, um, can can get in beat every week. But obviously last season was fantastic for us, so I hated the uh, international breaks. But now it's got to the stage where I am actually liking them again. Um, but just before we get started, I just do quickly want to remind everyone that Turfcast is sponsored by Green King, um, where uh, uh, the, 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 just quickly, my, <laughs> I normally have it on screen, everybody, so I can quickly read it, but typically my computer has crashed, so I will I will wait until I can see it. Oh, it's here now, it's here now. Um, so we'll just pretend all of that didn't happen and we'll try and be as smooth as possible. But for the 23-24 season, the Turfcast podcast pregame show is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. It's a massive fortnight of sport with the Premier League, rugby, cricket, all taking centre stage at the moment. So to celebrate that, Green King is giving listeners of this podcast 20% off all drinks until the 29th of October, an hour before, during and after the sport. All you need to do is download the Green King Sport app if you've not downloaded it before and you'll get a free welcome pie. So head to the App Store, download the Green King Sport app, get 20% off your round and don't miss a minute of the action. Right then, Dave, let's get into it now. That's I'm out gonna, of the way. I'm, I'm going to download the app, mate. That sounds download good. the app, mate. Download the app. I, mate, I, I, I'll download it. As I just said, off, well, I've said it already on, on stream, Anna. Um, I'm going down on, on Saturday, so I'm looking forward to it. So I might find a Green King pub in the local area. Mm. I've already um, checked the website by the way um there's quite a few uh, there's a few on look at london apprentice q gardens hotel grove city barge bulls head cricketers they're all some good pubs there. So some really sure. good pubs. Like yeah. london apprentice well, check it out it's good really good right yeah down definitely down the road. I, I think i went to the cricketers last time i can't remember yeah. it was two years ago pub. two years ago yeah there are some nice pubs um, but let's get into it then we're both only one, I'm going to say miserable, but I, I won't go that far. Um, but we both had a poor start to the season. And I, I want to ask you about your start, actually, because I know Brentford 
a aside that um, some people think that not they shouldn't be in the Premier League, but they're one of the smaller clubs in the Premier League, as are Burnley. Um, so people often sort of like say at the start of the season, I think Brentford will go down just because of the size of the club. I look at Brentford and I have always seen, well, last season and this season, looked at Brentford at the start of the season and thought, yeah, that they're, they're, they're a safe pair, is that safe pair of hands? They will finish mid table. But you've had a bit of a slow start, haven't you? And you're not really in the position that you want to be, and you've only won once. Only lost three times. I think you've drawn four. As I said, the computer's been a bit weird, so I can't quickly get that up at, at the minute. So you do sound like you're quite difficult to beat, but not where you'd want to be at this stage, I, I think, especially with some of the teams that you've played. What are your thoughts on your season so far? It's a, it's a really difficult one because, yeah, it, it really isn't that bad, but it, it kind of almost is at the, at the same time because you're right. We've, we, we've, we've lost the two games that we lost recently. That's, that's like we've only we've only played badly in one game, and that was Everton um, at home, and we we we, we deservedly lost that. So yeah, that's the one where not, I look I watched that. I was that. Team. So yeah, apart from that's that the one, one where I was a bit worried for you. Apart from that one performance, we we've done all right. Um, considering we haven't, you know, we haven't got Ivan Tony. We've taken our our top goal scorer out of our team. David Raya is now, um, as, you, as the world knows, is, is at Arsenal yeah. now. Um, we lost Rico Henry, um, and we've we've lost, you know, uh, Josh De Silva, and there's there's, there's other injuries um, in in the team. So, with all that with all that stacked against us, we've 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 only poorly performed once, and then the the the, the two other defeats were. 1-0 at Newcastle, which we deserve to get something out of. And it took a really dodgy penalty, I, I thought, to, to beat us. And um, a, the traumatic last couple of minutes at Old Trafford, where we were winning until three minutes into injury time. And Scott McTominay scored two goals. And it, it, it was it was brutal. It was a brutal ending to the game. And we deserve to get yeah. something like that. So, yeah, it, it, we're lower than we probably would we, we would want to be. Um, we, we drew too many games at home. We should have we should have beaten Bournemouth. We should have beaten Crystal Palace. And the other one was Spurs at home, which, you know, they're, they're having a good season. So the opening day mm. we drew against Spurs. So that's not... That's not a bad result, and we beat we beat Fulham away, which was a great day out. So, we 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 desperately need a win though, um, because it just takes the pressure off. I I don't I'm not feeling like we're being sucked into a relegation dogfight. I think we're too good for that. Mm. So, so says Leicester last year, um, and um, we have got you know Ivan coming back, and there's the the, the injuries are only going to get better. Hopefully, um, you know I, I can't see we. You know, it's not fair if we get any more. But yeah, so <laughs> it, it looks like we've had a, a really bang average start to the season. But it, it, it we the la the defeats apart from one have, have have been kind of like um against teams that have got lucky. I think. Yeah. So how are you playing then? You said there it's not as bad as it looks. Is that because you're watching your team play and think actually we're playing all right here. We've been a little bit unlucky. You can point to the Man United game. I think everybody who, who didn't even watch the game could just see the minutes of the goal scored. I think yeah, unlucky. You pointed to the Newcastle game there. You pointed to the Crystal Palace game. Are you looking at these games, watching you play and think we're playing all right? We've just been a little bit unlucky. Yeah. Uh, overall, um, We've we create it. We are creating lots of good chances in all of the games. So um, it's, there there hasn't been a match where we look like we're completely out of it um, or we've been yeah. out, out, outclassed. Um, um, so yeah, so I said you know the, the Everton game aside, I think in every single match we've done ourselves justice, considering you know that. It would. It's not the. It's not the Brentford team of last year that that served us so well. You know, the first few games with Brian and Bumo um, and Johan Weiss scoring, it looked like that we were going to survive pretty seamlessly without Ivan. But I think that would have yeah. been quite naive to think that that could have carried on because Ivan is such a miss. You know, um, you can't take an eighty million pound player out of your team like if you're a Brentford or a, a Burnley and it not have an effect. You, 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 we just haven't got those kind of players just sitting around. So. Um, yeah, we, 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 we do miss Ivan terribly. So how are you playing then uh, like in, in sort of like what style? You mentioned there, you, you quickly sk skipped over it, said you're creating a lot of chances. That's that's a worry as a Burnley fan, listening to that with the way that we've defended so far this season. Um, is it is it still um, the same sort of like similar way that you've been playing over the last few years or have you had to adapt it now that Tony's um, 
band? It's slightly, yes, it's slightly adapted. I mean, um, at the beginning, we were playing, you know, want of a better word, better football, um, because we, we didn't have that target man to, to, to kick yeah. the ball long to um, and, and, and or anyone to hold it up. Um, that's, that's what we're missing. And he, he gets back and he, and he gets stuck in the defence. So um, we haven't got a target man. So we, 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 we're relying on Brian and Boomer and Wiesa and, um, and um, Kip King Lewis Potter when he's played to get the ball out wide um, and, and, and cut in. But luck, fortunately, we've got... Um, We've got Christian Norgard back in the team and Matt, Matty Jensen. Yeah, two uh, Matty Jensen's having a really good season so far. We're relying on him a lot. Um, so we, 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 we prefer three or five at the back um, um, and, and, and with, with overlapping wingbacks. But we've been hit, as I said, with, with, with Rico Henry's injury because it, it, he was so central again to the way we play. You know his pace is, was just scary, um, and it was it was really really galling that he didn't get called up into the England squad. Not this international break, the one before, because he was on fire, um, and he got injured in the first game back up at Newcastle, and he'd be out for the rest of the season. So, yeah, we're 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 in we're adapting still. You know, it's 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 something that it's we're we're evolving. Like we're not we're not in a fortunate position that we can kind of like tell you now exactly how we're going to play because it just depends who's available yeah fair enough uh, i was going to ask you you've mentioned there rico henry obviously you mentioned at the top of the show i haven't torn it we'll get on to him individually in a minute uh, and of course david Rea, who's gone to arsenal is there anybody else injured or missing that we need to know about um yeah well josh de silva he's he's, a, he's, a, he's got an achilles problem um Ethan Pinnock, who was an absolute rock up at Old Trafford, um, he missed the Jamaica internationals this this week, just gone past. So I'm hoping that he will be okay. There's a bit of a question mark there. Mm. Um, I think I think that's it, unless I've forgotten anyone. I, I, I don't think there's. Oh well, Flecken, the goalkeeper. I, I think he's got um, he's got a, he's got a virus. Um, and um, uh, Kevin Sharder. Yeah, he, he he was the he was the replacement for Ivan Tony. Apparently, um, we bought him from from Freiburg in in Germany, and he's got a, um, a an abductor, um, like a like a you know a, a stomach or leg joining muscle injury, and I think he, he's out for a couple of months. So yeah, there's Kevin Shard is another big miss. Yeah, interesting. I've noticed you brought Neil Moore pay back as well. Um, obviously, did very well at Brentford before. Uh, I've never been a massive fan of him, personally. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I, he's a forward that doesn't really score goals. Um, has he done anything since he's come back and, and, and helped you guys? Or uh, we, We've hardly seen him, to be honest. He's, mm. he's, he, he's, he couldn't play against Everton because that's, where he, that's who we've loaned him from. So they, yeah. he, didn't get, he didn't get home debut. We've not seen him at home yet. Um, this will be the first game that's available. Um, and the, the away games, he, he just literally got a couple of minutes at the end of each one and came on against Man United and got booked straight away. And he, he had a good, he had a good shot, um, which, you know, which, you know, it, it could have made it too at the time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, more pay. He doesn't score goals if you don't, if you don't give him the yeah. right service. I mean, I don't think any, anyone would have scored goals in that, that Everton team unless they were seven foot, you know, it's, yeah. it's not, not the way, you know, you guys know how, how he plays, guys. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't chosen to play in in a Daesh team, so um, I think uh, we, we love him because you know he's part of the reason we, we, we yeah, you know sure. we started knocking on the door in the Prem, and, he, and he's he scored goals in the Championship for us. We give him the right service; he score goals again in the, in, in in this team. And Brian Mbumo, is that how you pronounce it? Um, yep. He's a fantastic player. Um, I presume he'll be playing at, at the weekend. Bloody hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah he, he's okay. a good player. He's a very he's good player. He's stunning. He's, he's someone who's matured um, without Ivan Tony around. Um, I, I'm sure, you know, Ivan called him his little brother a couple of times um, in that in that infamous podcast he did with the Diary of a CEO yeah. recently. Uh, and I, I think Brian has kind of realised that he's he's the main man at the moment. And he's 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 seized the you know his assists and his goals, especially in the first few weeks of the season. Um, but yeah, he, he he gives his all. So yeah, we're relying on him. Yeah, I think he could cause us some problems. If I'm being honest with you, um, 
please let me know more about the Pinnock injury as well when you get to know some because he's in my dream No way, team. I'm not telling you anything. Yeah, no, he, no, he, he, just he, just he, tell yeah. me personally. I'm, I won't tell Vincent, I promise. He's in my yeah. dream team and it's a draft dream team, so I can't just chop and change at will. I need to make calculated decisions. And it's um well yeah, it's if he's not if he's not there, I think I think your your mate Ben Mee is, is back. So um I think... Well yeah, we will get we will get onto Ben Mee. I do in fact you mentioned him, so let's let, it's, it's a nice bridge, obviously. Bur Burley legend, it's not 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 often you'll hear somebody, you know, who, who's recently left the club called a legend, but Ben Mee's definitely a legend. Fantastic servant for us, was gutted when he left. He would have been an absolute well. It would have been an absolute rock in the championship, but I'm not sure he would suit our current style of play. Well, he definitely wouldn't suit our current style of play, playing out from the back. He isn't that sort of defender. Um, but a couple of questions. How is he getting on with you guys? And what's his relationship between the fans? I I'm, I'm think your fans quite like him, don't you? I think we love him. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he's, he, we he all was, do. He was, he was the signing of, of last season. And it, he was, we can't, you know... Um, we had all these preconceptions about him before he before he arrived, and none of them none of them were true. <laughs> you know, mm. um, we kind of looked at his age and we looked at a few things, and we just thought, well, is, is he really is he really cut out to play in, in this Brentford team? And he was excellent. Um, he, he was a big part of the reason we we did so well. We finished as yeah. high as we did. His, his experience, um, his intelligence, his 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 the reading of the game. Um, he, he he was superb. He, we again, we probably we, he's another one we've missed. He's been out for a few weeks, so um, yeah, true. He's, in fact, he's hardly been in the team around this this season. So uh, you know, we we need some bodies back, and we need someone with experience and that calm head as well. So yeah, he, he's been a brilliant brilliant signing for us, and uh, hopefully we we will he'll stay around and move into coaching with us because he's I think he li I think he likes being at Brentford as well. Yeah, well, it's probably, it'll probably come to that scenario where it, when he does retire that we will. Well, I don't know if our staff, current staff, would want him, but I know our fans would definitely want him back. It's part of the reason why I'm going to Brentford this Saturday. Like, I, I genuinely want to see Ben Me. I want him to play as though it will probably be better for us if he doesn't. I, I want to see him play again. It's it's, it's been a while. Uh, I miss him. He's a legend, like I said. Uh, another one, former player that you've got at the minute, is uh, Nathan Collins, of course. Uh, not as much of a legend as Ben. Uh, well, not a legend. Uh, not that we hate him or anything, um, yeah. but obviously he was only here for one season. Um, did the handball that, you know, the famous handball on the last day of the season that, that practically sent us down, but no one no one blames him. We were, we were poor uh, uh, over the course of the season. How's he getting on at, uh, at the GTEC? Uh, all right, yeah. He, he um he had a really good preseason, uh, and um the first few games he looked he looked all right. He's he's, he's been injured as well, yeah. uh, um, but he's, he's had a couple of games where he's 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 kind of with he's got a bit of crit criticism, and I, he didn't have a very good weekend, I don't think, with Ireland either. So um, a couple of people are kind of going twenty odd million for for that, you know. Uh, it's, it's those kind of comments which are kind of quite quite lazy. I think I think he's a really good player, um, and I, I think he he really will fit into our team. But just it's just our team's not set up the way we envisaged. It's it's, it's, yeah. it's we're 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 kind of. We're just putting a team together at the moment, rather than picking. We're picking. We're not picking our best eleven. They're just not there. So, in if we're able to pick, if everyone was available, I'm, I'm sure it would be you know a lot more positive. But there's a lot of pressure on him at the moment. And um, but he's all right, you know. He's, he wants a lot of money though. Yeah, it's kind of like a similar sort of way that we used to talk about him. Like he's all right. Like he's good. Like it, we had high hopes again when we went down because. He, he spent a lot of the season on the bench. Oh, I remember thinking, oh, well, when we go down, he'll be brilliant in the championship. But then towards the end of the season, Ben Mee was injured. Um, so he played a lot of it. His stock rose and then he left. Uh, so they were a little bit disappointed. But not that, with the way he left, just the fact that he left. Um, a bit dis dis disappointing. I thought he would have been brilliant in the championship. Uh, but that's, you know, uh, you learn to live. A, uh, that's gone, all that sort of stuff. So we'll move yep. on. Um I do want to talk to you, as I mentioned earlier, before we get onto the Burnley stuff, because I do like to ask questions about Burnley to the, the the person that's on. And I didn't do it last time out against Chelsea because the Chelsea fan, brilliant talker, but he was talking too much and I got a lot of criticism in the comments saying, you need to ask him about Burnley. So I'll be asking you about Burnley uh, for all the fans that, 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 that did give me some criticism. But I do want to talk about Ivan. You mentioned him then. Uh, you mentioned him earlier, should I say, and I did take, I did find it interesting. You said that when Ivan is back, now you will obviously know more about Brentford than I ever will. Um, but a lot of the noise in the media, the national media, tends to be is 
he's not going to go back. He's he's just going to when his band's back, he's probably going to go to Arsenal or somewhere like that. What are the thoughts inside Brentford? Are you expecting him to play for you again? Personally, no. Um, you know, there's this there's, there's so as you rightly say, there's so much noise surrounding yeah. him. Um, a lot of it created by you know his his own. I use the word stupidity. Um, mm, you know, no, he, he, he's, he's brought he's brought all this on himself, and Brentford Football Club are, are paying a heavy price for, for for him and him not him not coming clean quick enough, and 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 him um, doing what Ivan Tony what Ivan Tony wants. Ivan Tony does a lot of the time, um, and he's, he's, so that that's in stark contrast across to most other players or all other players in our team stands out like a sore thumb there's no there's no kind of egos like that um yeah. but he does put up with a lot of racist abuse as well on on the flip side of that he he, he has got a lot to cope with he, he is he's um he's a, he's a he's a man of contrast so question I, I, do i expect him to come back um no i probably not he's, he's worth too much to us and i think once his band's out of the way um i think you know arsenal are desperate for him really you mm. know they're, they're not going to win the title without a target man like him agree um and um there's up there's other teams tottenham obviously you know they're they're, oh, they're doing all right without harry kane but they're, they're, that, they'll, they'll only get him so far um man united and chelsea will always be in in the sniffing around as well so he's he's worth 80 million at least um and i i can't see us going another window it's, it's just uh, we need closure on it and on, on yeah. him um it's a big window for us in january it's probably best if he if he if he if he's not there but if he is he, he will score goals and you know it, it'll help us it'll help us sort of get to safety yeah, interesting. Interesting to see how that one pans out. Um, I did mention there, obviously, I'll get your thoughts on, on Burnley. Um, quite a lot has changed since you last played Burnley, of course, on the pitch, off the pitch. Uh, new owners um, got towards the end of the last Premier League season, of course, have gone in a different direction with managers and branding and things like that. What are your thoughts on the job that Vincent Company's done? Because, of course, he came in after we've been relegated, uh, a massive job. I think 16 players left, something like that, and he brought in a, a similar amount. So to get us turned round and to win the championship last season so easily, for want of a better word, is uh, fantastic. But obviously, a slow start to the Premier League season, but I, I, I've been banging the drum uh, on, on this show that you know we shouldn't panic just yet. We've played a lot of difficult sides. But what are your thoughts on the job that Vincent's done at Burnley so far? Yeah, I mean, last season especially, yeah, to, to have to have transformed the way you play and to to um, to sort of manage the the um, evolution um, and getting that amount of new players in and to bed down and to play a style of football that he, he wants. You know, yeah. I've been massively impressed with Vincent Company as a, as a as a man as a, and as a person. Um, the interviews that I've seen him do um, in the media, he's, he's a real he's a he's a he's a wise wise head on on a on a fairly kind of young young person still um i know a fair amount about his, his growing up time um and uh I, you know vincent company is someone who i'm sure will be man city manager at some stage if he if yeah. he can get the trajectory right but what he's doing at, at burnley probably is, is is slightly masked because you because of the tough start you've had he's always seems to have been confident that he's he's, he's going to turn it around and he's, he's he certainly doesn't ever the way he, way he speaks is he's not going to panic and he, he knows it's kind of in, incremental changes and, and his team's going to get yeah. there but it's, you know we all know it's the jump from the championship to the prem is it can be brutal um but i think i burnley aren't in you know in any any threat of relegation i don't think over over the nine months it's just you know early on it's going to take some adaptation but you know like you said about brentford i'm not going to i don't know i, I can't name your team but I know that you know it's, it's, it's packed with with young talent now, and yeah. um, you know we we don't underestimate you coming. To, we're not looking at your start to the season thinking it's an easy three points, um, but we do, equally we don't look at Burnley coming anymore and think, oh God, don't go one nil down against them, and if they're going to yeah. shut the shop up. And so yeah, it, it it goes two ways. One, if you change, if you don't play that Daesh style of football then you're open for the whole 90 minutes. And I, I think it'd be a good contest, you know. It's not, it's no, I agree. We'll, we'll go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We both need to win, um, although you'll probably take a draw. 
right now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah right now to start the season, I would. I, I do look at our next few fixtures and think these are more winnable. Obviously, we've got you guys and we've got Bournemouth. Uh, then off the top of my head, I think it's um, I can't remember actually. I was going to say Chelsea, but it's not Chelsea. Um, but we've got winnable games coming. I think Palace is in and around it as well over the next few games. So if we're looking at these and thinking more winnable. Yeah, I've got them here now. So Brentford next, obviously. Uh, then Bournemouth away, them to run away, which is annoying. I would have liked, you know, at least one of them to be at home. Uh, having said that, we've not been great at home. And the only one win we've got this season was away from home. Then we've got Everton in the Cup on Wednesday the 1st. Then it is Palace, then Arsenal, then West Ham, then Sheffield United, Wolves. So some winnable games coming up, um, but we need to start picking up points. I agree with you. I think we'll be there or thereabouts. Um, at the start of the season, I was a bit more confident. I, I went on other channels say we'll finish... Um, like 11th to 14th or something like that. I, I've reined that in a little bit, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, but I, I do I do agree with you. I, th- I think we'll stay up. Um, and I'm normally quite pessimistic, but I just, like you said, Vincent Company just fills me with a bit of confidence. And remember last season, we got beat 5-2 at Sheffield United and me and my dad came away from that game thinking like, wow, we might not actually go up now. I, th- I think we went third at that point. Um, I think Sheffield United we went second. I think even Blackburn were top. Um, so that were a bit of pill to swallow. But then, Apparently, I was talking because the documentaries come out about Burnley this season. I don't know if you've seen it. No, I've seen it advertised anywhere. But um, we had the, it. yeah, we had the guy who was like the main director on it or the main producer, and he was saying like you're in the room afterwards with Vincent and Alan Pearce, and he said Vincent just weren't not not that he weren't bothered, but he was just so calm about it and said, yeah, we'll just go away, we'll learn what we need to learn, we'll fix this, we'll fix that, and that fills me with confidence knowing that now at Barnfield. That's what he'll be like. It, he'll be cool. He'll be calm. He'll collect it. He won't be panicking. And I'm not panicking just yet. Ask me again if we get beat 3 0 off you in 2 0 off Bournemouth, then I might have changed my tune. But I think these two yeah. are massive. These two games are massive. If we get, if we get one win out of these two, then yeah, I think that shows that we that we can beat the teams that are going to be in and around us. Um, what sort of game are you expecting? We'll get into predictions in a minute, but what, how, because obviously you said there before you expect like a Burnley side on the dice to come sit back, try and soak up pressure, they hit you in set pieces or counter attacks, which is what we tried to do the time we lost 2 0, but we didn't offer anything going forward at all. I remember in that game, and then eventually the, the pressure just cracked. I think you had Ericsson at the time, he whipped a ball in for, for Tony, I think it was, who scored a great header. Um, but how were you expecting the game to pan out? You mentioned there you think we'll go toe to toe. I'm hoping you do, yeah. I, 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 I obviously as an away game you always you, you know away games for whatever reason it's it's they're, they're, you, you do approach them a little bit differently but um yeah. I, I think i think you i think company will be looking at this as as a um a, as an opportunity to get at least a point and um if he if he can if he can get his team firing in all cylinders there's it's, it's three points to be to be had there for, for sure as i said you know we're we're weakened and if if we don't play to our potential and and and, our, and, the, and the players that are available don't don't perform, then you know you, you've got the beating of us for for a hundred percent. You know, so we're not taking anything for granted. I th- I just think that they're they're two teams that like to play now, and um and and I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to you know a, a lot of a lot of ball on floor, um and a lot of ball in play. Hopefully, and uh, yeah, a game a game that creates a lot of chances, and you know. Whoever takes them, it's a bit of a cliche. Will win, and uh, but we we'll see we're seeing using goal for us because you know the, the goalkeeping position is another one at the moment that's not it's not great. So um, we'll see what happens. Funny you mentioned that. I think I think uh, there's a, a couple a bit a big debate should I say on the Burnley hashtags at the minute about who should be the goalkeeper. Oh, I won't I won't get into that just yet. I think I caused a bit of a storm the other day with a bit of a tweet, but um, um yeah we'll, we'll 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 stay off that one. But I I agree. I think it's going to be a good game. Two sides wanting to play football. Um, not that there's a right way or a wrong a wrong way to play football. I still bang that drum, even though I bang that drum under dice. There's no right or wrong way. This way is definitely a lot more entertaining. I, I, I'll I will say that. Uh, but two football teams that want to play football in a certain way, and I think will run at each other. We'll try and get at each other. My worry is I think your defence is probably better than ours. Um, so I think that might just give you the edge. But I'm going to go in it with a bit of a confidence. This might be the last time I do this, going with some confidence. But I'm going to predict 2-2. Entertaining game. Two good sides going at each other. Uh, two sides that will hopefully be clear of the relegation places at the end of the season. What are you predicting, mate? It's really weird you said that. I, I got 2-2 written down here. So, um, yeah, same, same. so we'll, 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 we'll agree. I mean, I'd, 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 be, I'd, come, I'd walk back to the pub. It's fairly, no, I'm disappointed, but I, I think it'll be, you know, uh, points dropped. But yeah, I, I, it's, it's an opportunity for us to win it, obviously. We're at home. Yeah. Um, 
we've got a pretty good record with a, the one defeat. But during last season, it was a bit of a fortress. But um, yeah, two 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 I, would be would be a really entertaining match, wouldn't it? So uh, yeah, if the very least we go go away and uh, entertained. Yeah, the very least, the four-hour drive back, uh, I'd be happy with a point and an well, entertaining be lucky game. To do it in four. Be lucky to do it in four. True, right? yeah. Four and a half, five maybe, depending on, on, on traffic, I suppose. Yeah. I can't remember how long it was last time. Uh, we stopped at two service stations. That tells you how long it was. Probably about closer to six <laughs> hours, I can't remember. Uh, but I'm taking Little Boy down this weekend for his first ever Premier League match. He's been on a couple of championship games last season and went on the FA Cup uh, defeat at City last season. But this will be his first ever Premier League match. So oh. hopefully oh. he gets, <laughs> gets his head down in Hopefully we make him cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him you said that, mate. I'll tell him you said that. Uh, but no, that, that's it from me, mate. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Obviously, Be Sotted is a popular podcast that's been around for a long time. I uh, just want to let him know. Thousands hey, edition. Oh. Thousands edition this week. Excellent, mate. Yeah. Make sure to check it out. Just want to let everyone know where they can find you and your social medias and your thousands. Yeah, on Twitter, X, whatever it's called now, we're at Besotted, B W E S O T E D, um, Besotted.com on the uh, on the internet um, and everywhere else. Yeah, just just search us. But um, yeah, have a safe journey down and um, yeah, enjoy cheers, the mate. pubs. There's, there's a lot of pubs in Brentford. Um, yeah, sample as many as you can. <laughs> Yeah, obviously driving, so I won't be able to do that much. But I'll be able to get a, a, a round with two corks of twenty percent off, I think, uh, if you download the Green King Sport app. But yeah, thank you, mate. Genuinely, do check out Be Sotted, everybody. If you are watching this and, and you don't usually do that, Be Sotted is one of the one that I did look at when starting the podcast. It's been around for a long time. It was Be Sotted from the Rookery End and Roker Report were the three that I looked at and thought them three are the best. I'll take a look at them. But congratulations, mate, on all that you do. Okay. Congratulations on the thousandth episode. Good luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, you too. Just not on Saturday. Okay, enjoy it.